Hello everyone! For today's topic, we will talk about the basic principles in conveying system. To start off, let us discuss what is a conveyor system. So basically, it is a common piece of mechanical handling equipment that moves materials from one location to another. Conveyors are specifically useful in application involving transportation of heavy or bulky materials. A conveyor system is a fast and efficient mechanical handling apparatus for automatically transporting loads and materials within an area. So, how do conveyor systems work? Typically, it is consists of a belt stretched across two or more pulleys. The belt forms a closed loop around the pulleys so it can continually rotate. One pulley, known as the drive pulley, drives or tows the belt, moving items from one location to another. The most common conveyor system design use a rotor to power the drive pulley and belt. The belt remains attached to the rotor through the friction between the two surfaces. For the belt to move effectively, both the drive pulley and idler must run in the same direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Here are some of the benefits of conveyor systems. It moves objects from one location to another, objects that are too heavy or too bulky for humans to carry by hand. Helps save time when transporting items. It helps as they can be inclined to span multiple levels. They make it simpler to move items up and down floors. Also, inclined belts can automatically unload material, eliminating the need for someone to be on the opposite end to receive pieces. When designing a conveyor system, there are some considerations. A conveyor more or less acts as a central nervous system for operation that receive, handle, store, distribute, manufacture, or ship products. Installing the wrong conveyor system will quickly undermine a warehouse's operational efficiency, leading to higher cost and lower customer satisfaction, eventually stripping the business of its competitive advantage. An ideal conveyor system must be Operationally safe, energy efficient, reliable, adaptable to changing needs, and cost effective. There are factors to consider when evaluating and selecting the right conveyor system. One is for product requirements. The type of item or items to be moved will determine the design, dimensions, and type of conveyor system to be installed. So, First, we need to assess or to determine what type of product is being conveyed. What is the average weight per foot of product? What is the maximum weight of the products? Next is process requirements. Process requirements cover factors governing how the conveyor should move and the unique conditions of the operating environment. So, we need to know the distance items need to move between functional areas, transfer speed, short, rapid movement, or slow, steady movement. And also, we need to know the ambient environment. Next is transfer requirements. The point where items are transferred to and from the conveyor is a critical one. Most conveyors use side-to-side -side transfers, powered transfers, dead plates, gravity rollers, etc. to facilitate these. And last is conveyor system cost. The cost of purchasing, installing, and maintaining the system. Cost depends on type of conveyor system, overall length, required speed, dimensions, curb, and transfer method. Main elements of a conveyor Number 1. Conveyor Drive Conveyor drive is the part of the conveyor which powers the conveyor that allows the system to move. It can refer to the motor or the assembly which mounts the motor to the conveyor. 
The unit contains a counter bearing that keeps the parts moving efficiently. This allows for the belt to move in reverse and manage the repeated adjustments and direction for some systems. They may either be of fixed speed or adjustable speed type. When we say fixed speed, the conveyor speed does not require change during the course of normal operation. On the other hand, adjustable speed type is designed for changing speed either manually or automatically while conveyor is in operation. Types of Drive Assemblies and Drive Conveyors The drive assembly is located at one of the conveyor's end. The motor powers one of the end rollers on conveyor. Ideally, the drive is located at the discharge end of the conveyor so that it is pulling the belt or chain over the pulley. This drive style is also referred to as a head drive as in the direction the product heads are toward the head of the conveyor. Types of Drive Assembly Center Drive Conveyors The drive assembly is located along the center of the conveyor frame. This can typically be mounted anywhere along the frame of the conveyor. The motor does not engage either of the conveyors and pulleys or rollers. Center drives are also referred to as mid-mount drives. Another type of drive assemblies is internal drive conveyors. The drive pulley and the motor are one assembly or a single piece. The motor is housed within the pulley. Internal drive conveyors can have the motorized pulley located at the end or in the center. However, the end drive is far more common. Conveyor motor Conveyor motors for conveyor rises are generally 240 volts and 480 volts ratings. The squirrel cage motor is most commonly used with belt conveyors and with drives up to 7.457 kilowatts. AC induction motors are ideal for conveyor systems that operate continuously in one direction. Auxiliary Equipment When we say auxiliary equipment, it is the peripheral equipment that may be an integral part of the extrusion process to improve or optimize the extrusion process efficiency and ease of operation. They are the addition support equipment. Control of Conveyors Control has been enhanced considerably with the introduction of process control computers and programmable controllers which can be used to maintain rated capacities to close tolerances. Through variable speed drives, outputs can be adjusted automatically for changes in processing condition. So moving on to the types of conveyors. Suit conveyor. This is one of the least expensive methods of conveying material. It is the simplest example of gravity operated conveyor. The main limitation of shoot conveyors is the lack of control over the items being conveyed. The packages may tend to shift and turn so that jumps and blockages occur. Next is wheel conveyor. These can be used as pusher units set horizontally or inclined for gravity flow. Uses a series of skate wheels mounted on shaft. Slow per gravity movement depends on load weight more economical than roller conveyor for light duty applications, flexible and has expandable version available. Roller conveyor may be powered or live or non-powered or gravity. Tapered rollers on curbs used to maintain load orientation. Non-powered roller conveyors are the most economical and common method of conveying unit loads. As with gravity wheel conveyors, roller units are highly standardized and auxiliary equipment is available for supporting the line from ceiling or floor. Next is chain conveyor. Uses one or more endless chains on which loads are carried directly parallel chain 
configuration used to transport pallets, vertical chain conveyor used for continuous high-frequency vertical transport. Slot conveyor. It consists of endless chains driven by electric motors operating through reduction gears and sprockets with attached space slats to carry objects. Orientation and placement of the load is controlled used for heavy loads or loads that might damage a belt. Belt conveyor. Belt conveyors are most commonly used in transportation of bulk materials like grain, ore, sand, etc. One of its example is flat belt conveyor. It is used for transporting light and medium weight loads between operations, departments, levels, and buildings. Magnetic belt conveyor. A steel belt magnetic slider bed or magnetic pulley is used to transfer ferrous materials vertically, upside down, and around corners. Thrust belt conveyor, used to transfer bulk materials. When loaded, the belt conforms the shape of the thrust rollers and idlers. Vibrating conveyor, consists of a thrust, bed, or tube. Vibrates at a relatively high frequency and small amplitude in order to convey individual units of products or bulking materials can be used to convey almost all granular free-flowing materials. Screw conveyor A tube or U-shaped stationary throw through which a shaft-mounted helix revolves to push loose materials forward in horizontal or inclined direction. One of the most widely used conveyors in the processing industry. Pneumatic conveyor Can be used for both bulk and unit movement of materials. Air pressure is used to convey materials through a system of vertical and horizontal tubes. Major advantages are that material is completely enclosed and it is easy to implement turns and vertical moves. Vertical conveyor Used for low-frequency intermittent vertical transfer. Vertical lift conveyor Are carrier used to raise or lower a load to different levels of a facility can be manually or automatically loaded, and or controlled and interface with horizontal conveyors. Reciprocating vertical conveyor utilizes gravity-actuated carrier to lowering loads, where the load overcomes the magnitude of a counterweight. Conveying system used in escalator, elevator, and moving walkways. Escalator the core of an escalator is a pair of chains looped around two pairs of gears. An electric motor turns the drive gears at the top, which rotate the chain loop. A typical escalator uses a 100 horsepower motor to rotate the gears. The motor and chain system are housed inside the truss, a metal structure extending between two floors. The chain loop moves a series of steps. Elevator or lifts. The lift is a type of vertical transport equipment that efficiently moves people or goods between floors of a building, vessel, or other structure. Powered by electrical motors that either drive cable, hoist, or pump hydraulic fluid to raise a cylindrical piston like a jack. Basic terminologies in elevators or lifts. Elevator car. The part of an elevator that includes the platform, enclosure, car frame, and door. Machine beam. A steel beam positioned directly over the elevator in the machine room and is used to support elevator equipment. Machine room. This is usually located at the top of the shaft and accommodate the winding machine. Pit. The part of an elevator shaft that extends from the threshold level of the lowest landing door down to the floor at the very bottom of the shaft. The shaft, a hoist weight through which one or more elevator cars may travel. Counterweight or balance weight, a unit consisting of steel weights 
which counterbalance the weight of the car and a portion of the load, and to which the suspension ropes are attached. Traction Drive A lift whose lifting ropes are driven by friction in the grooves of the driving sheave of the machine. Trailing Cable Flexible cable providing electrical connection between the lift car and a fixed point or points. Bottom Clearance the distance, including buffer compression, the platform could travel below the bottom landing until the full weight of the car, when loaded, rests on the buffer. Top clearance. The vertical distance between the top of car attachment and the bottom of the diverting pulley or any steel work supporting equipment, there must be an adequate margin between this and the car will not contact the diverting pulley or steel work. Types of elevators or lifts. Passenger lifts. Passenger elevator is designed to move people between floors of a building. Goods or freight lifts. Used to transfer heavy goods but depends on the type of goods transported. Vehicle lifts. Used specifically to lift a car in a multi-story car park or showroom. It had to be in the form of traction and hydraulics. Dumbwaiter lifts. Small freight elevator that are intended to carry food rather than passenger. They often link kitchens with other rooms. Scissor lift. Used for indoor and outdoor construction, maintenance, and installation application. Moving walkways. Moving walkways use a conveyor belt to transport people. They are also known as moving sidewalks and are called travelators in the United Kingdom. Moving walkways move people and goods horizontally or on a lower angle of incline to the horizontal than an escalator. Conveying System Design Pneumatic Conveying System Pneumatic conveyor can move fine or dry materials using pressure differential and the flow of gas, typically compressed air or nitrogen. The material is totally enclosed within tubes or pipes where differences in pressure on either side cause a flow of product. Types of pneumatic conveyors Dilute phase Dilute phase pneumatic conveyors are a common system for non-fragile materials and implement low-pressure, high-velocity airstream which fluidize fine particles. Pressure conveyors Pressure conveyors work best with powder with bulk density less than 62 pounds per cubic feet and can move granules long distances. Vacuum conveyors. Vacuum conveyors are best suited for materials that are packed under pressure and are reserved for short distances. Dense phase pneumatic conveyors. They utilize high pressure and low velocity to move products prone to breakage. Dense phase pressure conveyor. Gently convey particles smaller than 0.75 inches over long distances above 250 feet. Dense phase vacuum conveyors gently convey particles smaller than 0.75 inches at shorter distance, less than 200 feet. Semi-dense phase pneumatic conveyors, they work well with airtable abrasive materials and convey them at rates around 1,500 to 3,500 feet per minute. Semi-dense conveyors find uses moving cement, fly ash, and more, and offer the optimum solution when needing a middle ground pneumatic conveyor. Mechanical conveying system. Mechanical conveying is a very efficient way to transfer a large amount of product from point to point, often over a long distance. Some mechanical conveyors cover a distance of half a mile or more, and because of their speed and capacity, are ideal for quickly offloading vehicles like trucks, rail cars, and barges. Types of mechanical conveyors. Screw conveyor. Screw conveyor use an auger type motion to move materials, oftentimes horizontally or at a slight incline. Drag chain conveyor. Drag chain conveyor use a chain and paddle design to move material. They come in two basic styles, en masse and bulk flow. Bucket elevators. They're used to facilitate big changes in elevation or to get products up high, especially drier products. Vibrating feeders. They use vibrating trays to advance materials. They are well suited for products that have a tendency to clump or stick together. Belt conveyors. Belt conveyors utilize a wide belt over rollers to move materials. 
It's perfect for moving a lot of products or covering very long distances. That concludes the report of Group 10 regarding basic principles in conveying system. Thank you for listening.